Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. I want to bring in Congresswoman Itterbees Johnson. You're the ranking member on the Subcommittee on Research and Science Education. Emphasize STEM education, so you're dealing with education, uh, and uh, you. And so, how do we? Uh, and again, um, so folks at home, when you hear ranking member, that means she's the chair. That's what it means. Uh, and so, um, um, how 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 should Congress deal with again the trauma that kids are facing? And so beyond. This, when you think about the three students in Parkland committed suicide, uh, you look at the father, of course, Sandy Hook. Uh, but when you look at the level of violence, poverty that exists in various communities, um, kids today are dealing with a level of trauma that was not there 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, I think you're right because our environments have changed tremendously. So much more stimuli. Uh, a number of committees are dealing with various aspect of this, aspects of this particular problem. I just left a meeting on poverty. Uh, that has a lot of influence on what happens to young people, what role models are available, what parents are even available if they're out trying to work in a single parent home. Uh, mental health care has been lacking in this country and has been much needed. We passed legislation last term that we worked on several years, got a part of it passed, and we have a, a more to go, which we hope to add to. It is, a, we're in a difficult environment in every environment. We're in a difficult environment legislatively in the Congress. We have very divided um, constituents. Uh, we have very divided representatives of those constituents. Every nick and cranny of this country has a representative there, and so you got all these mixed attitudes. It takes too long to address many of the problems. Uh, we're trying, all of the problems are on the table. We are talking about education. This particular administration has brought in a cabinet that we are trying our best to understand. One of the ones we cannot understand the rationale for her being there is the Secretary of Education. Uh, just today, uh, she mentioned something about how inept uh, black kids are, they're more evil, they deserve more punishment and that sort of thing. And in fact, she got chastised by that by Congresswoman Catherine Clark of Massachusetts, a play yes. that will come out to get your comment. Are you saying here, when you quote this research, that the problem really is that black children are just more of a discipline problem? Because that's the research you've quoted in your report. Well, Congresswoman, I've said it before and I'll say it again. No student no child should be treated or disciplined differently based on their skin color their and, race, and, and I think or their your, national origin. Your report agrees with that. They just say that by the, the very basis of being a black child, you are more likely to be a discipline problem. That's what the study says that you quoted in your report and said, that's why we now think they may not be motivated by race. Black children are just plain old more disruptive in the classroom. How did you come to that conclusion? Children should never, ever be discriminated against. Well, I hope you take and those words to heart are treated and repeal differently your citing of this research. And of course, uh, they want to repeal the Obama era rules that deal with discipline. But that also goes into uh, look, I was at my, my, my high school, Jack Hayes High School, yesterday in Houston. Uh, and this goes right into what teachers are dealing with. When you're dealing with young folks, especially young men, who are, who are going, who, first of all, the hell they got to get through just to get to school. Right. And then you have districts automatically suspending them, saying, oh, acting out in classrooms when, and if you talk to teachers, you talk to others, uh, they, 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 they're talking about literally what they have to endure, and folks are saying, well, why can't they just sit out and learn, but other teachers say, yeah, but you have to take into account, again, what they're, what they're dealing with just to even get to school on that day. You're, you're very right, and uh, what we're finding in our study on um, poverty is that you have fewer role models for young people. Mm -hmm. You have fewer mixed communities. Uh, educational levels now are separating. Professions are separating. 
Uh, and so children don't see a lot of role models that are in these particular situations to aspire to be like. And so there are a number of programs where we're trying to do that. But when you mix how much the problem really is and how much the funds have been cut for every single program that is designed to help to move young people and their families upward, it is, makes it very difficult for local communities to deal with it. We're looking at a situation now where the middle class is dwindling. Even though we've had huge tax breaks for the rich, and they are more rich than ever before, it did move a number of these young people up the scale at all. And, and, it's, and it's not just minority kids, mm -hmm. but they really have a larger percentage because it's harder because of racial prejudices uh, for them to make it out of some of these neighborhoods and these, these environments. Well, real quick, final comment. I think I may have a different perspective from you when it comes to the perspective that this trauma is new. No, 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 no. I, I don't no, believe the trauma is new. What I'm, saying in, what I'm saying is the trauma is different. Um, look, I, when, I, when I think about me going through elementary school, going through middle school, going to high school, when I reflect back, and literally when I was walking the hallways of my, of my high school, I was thinking about uh, when I was sitting in the classroom, how many... Um, uh, how many students died? And I can recall uh, a couple of students who died in a car crash. I can, re I can recall uh, a couple of others who may have died some other way. That's four over a period of eight, nine years. The six years I, the six, six years I spent in Chicago, I remember one time we did a story and literally there were kids who, ex who, who were not even in middle school who had already experienced the deaths of a dozen classmates. And so what I'm saying is that that's what's different. Uh, the, the frequency of young folks uh, dying as a result of violence, that's what I think is different today than it was when I was in elementary school, middle school. Could I point to something else that's different also? Congresswoman, then Cleo, go ahead. When I was growing up in our one block, we had a college president, we had a cement mixer, we had a trash collector, we had a teacher. Um, more than one teacher, we had beauticians, and we had a dentist. How much of that do you see in one block now? Right, and that was because, first of all, with, with, uh, with segregation, with segregation right. no matter how much money you had, you had to live right yeah. next to each other, but the reality is But the now, role models were there. Right, but, but now, if you have a certain level of resources, you can move. you're able to move, yeah. uh, and so you have compact areas right. of poverty. Cleo? Well, Nipsey was a role model. Yes, he was. N Nipsey was a un deniable and very visible role model. And I think there's a lot of black communities, I'm from Compton, South Central Los Angeles, the same area, there are role models right there. But when you're so traumatized that you can't see straight, you don't recognize role models because you're dealing with interpersonal disorientation. One thing that I think is true, which is why I had my comment to you, Roland, is that, and you, you kind of made a, your, your point, and Chicago is a special case. Chicago, to, to this day, and for a while, has been particularly violent in terms of its history. I mean, to Chicago, I could, I could use, I can go, no, I can, go, I can go to New Orleans. When I went down with Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Landrieu, he kept a binder, and then it, then it became four binders, and then five binders. And what he would do is, it was the murder scenes sure. of young black men who were killed, and he asked the families to give him photos of, of, of them in their ordinary life, and and he and he said how it was growing and growing. So it, it, it can again. I could, I could talk about Houston. I could talk about Charlotte, Philadelphia. And so I'm just saying that, I, I, that, that our kids today are seeing a level of gun violence and death at such early ages than what was the case when I, I, when I was in high school. Excuse well, me, I'll, I'll make my, school, point, school. I'll make my point quickly because it's going to take me all day if I keep uh, having... Make it quick. We are dealing with the festering of neglected trauma. Trauma yes. that was already there in these communities that was never properly engaged, particularly among black males who have been trained to act like a man and put on a man performance, what I call man drag. Or also be hard, which is why Same thing. when you go to these schools and you got young men who take a photo and not smiling, and I always say right. we're not taking jail photos because they literally have been, have been told, you, don't, you, you hard, 
yep. you are hard. Mm -hmm. Right, but the other part of that narrative is that you have to act hard so people won't see the fact that you're in pain. Got it. You have to perform like you're a man so you won't be seen as you crying because you can't afford as a black man in a society that already devalues you to come off weak. Right. When we try to counter these phenomena, we have to understand what people are going through. Venting is important, but we need to do a methodological discussion and implementation on how to reverse the symptomology, because it can be reversed. I've seen it reversed in my own work, that b b black men can go from being reactionary and upset to gain the proper tools to learn how to manage their righteous rage, because the rage is righteous in terms of it having a real justifiable c context of where it comes from, but we don't address it. Well, again, I think, uh, to Congresswoman, I do believe that dealing with the, the realities of trauma in schools is critically important, and then there has to be more resource officers and not just after shooting like at Parkland, uh, because all of a sudden, when that happens, all of a sudden they flood the zone, as opposed to what happens every single day. Final comment from you, and then we move on to our next story. Well, we are in the midst of trying to figure out a lot of things, and they've been compounded by the particular administration where we are. I don't think there's a major city in this country that's not dealing with, mm -hmm. not just with African-American kids, but immigrant kids and kids who have been here all the time. Got it. We have a lot more diversity, a lot less attention to that diversity, and, and, and it's we are at a beginning, and we've got to do something about it. I think all of us realize that there are certain programs that have been effective, but we've got to do more than that. We've got to address mental health in this country. All right, folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. So you have plenty of pictures in your home, but you've never seen anything like this before. Introducing Easy Tiles, the world's first photo tiles made of sleek and ultra lightweight glass. Easy Tiles makes it super simple. You use their exclusive app for iPhone and Android to upload as many photos as you like. Then they print them on tempered glass. Your order arrives on your doorstep in just a few days. And that's when the real fun begins, because with Easy Tiles, you transform your living space with a gallery wall that will amaze each and every guest. Easy Tiles are even simple to hang, no hammer and no nails. Cleo could even do this. And because they're mounted on small risers, they appear to float on your wall. <laughs> Folks, they're easy to order, easy to hang, and guaranteed for life. Now, you can save 30% on any size order, plus get free shipping on orders of four or more. Just download the free Easy Tiles app at easytiles.com and turn your best memories into beautiful glass wall art. Plus, save big now with this special offer. That's easytiles.com, easytiles.com. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.